They're having a fantastic afternoon, and I guess they <laughs> opened the door. Luckily, their dog didn't escape out. So, <laughs> they opened the gate wide open too, so he's good. Uh, real quick here, I woke up a little later today because last night was uh, pretty much a doozy there. That break kind of whipped me a little bit. But what I realized though, when I was actually reviewing back the videos, um, I actually flipped it differently than it was originally even. So what I did was, instead of, uh, let's see here. Instead of it, was actually, let me unwrap this. Just wanna, I don't know why I wrapped it. I was gonna rewrap it to show you guys. So this is a pretty dry, dry cloth there. Nothing in there, no wet marks or anything yet. But we'll use this as a tester. I actually had this guy facing the other way. So his little angle was actually bent it outward like this. So this is actually a whole different new angle for us. But so far, if it's working, we'll keep it. Um, I wiped everything down. I used a warm cloth and everything because brake fluid eats everything up. So I wiped everything down with warm cloth, including all my um, plastics, especially. So I went over here and I wiped everything down, all this area here with warm cloth. So it should be okay. Hoping. See, this one I can almost feel like the paint's kind of a little sticky. Maybe it's trying to wear out the paint or something. But anyway, we're going to open this guy back up and we're going to tempt him again. He's not going to beat us on this, okay? We're going to win this time. We're going to get to the point where this guy's going to squeeze and he's going to be tight. Right now, he's still loosey-goosey. So we're going to make it work. We're going to definitely make it work. So, see here, I just covered everything up. Not sure this is okay like this. Maybe it needs to be inclined a little bit up like that. Oh, yeah, it'll be fine like that. All right, so we got a little spill here and there. That shouldn't be the problem. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you can see here, uh, this is already secured down. This is dry, there's nothing in my hand. I'll do a wipe here so you guys can see. This guy should be dry too. I think I did a pretty good wipe of everything. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually start again. Now we have good sunlight, daylight here. I worked throughout the night. <laughs> uh, so that's why I stay in a little bit. Uh, just reviewing the videos and making sure, you know, what I had done. Because I couldn't see what you guys saw until afterwards. And I saw the leak came out from this guy mostly. So that was a good thing, good news for us. Because if there's anything connections to here issue, there was no way we could have fixed it. I mean, like I said, again, you had to have someone professionally be able to solder it back in or some sort. Not solder, like almost weld it in or so forth. So what we're going to do is I'm going to wrap this again. I'm going to do like a little tricky wrappy here. To make sure I cover everything. Now we could tell though if it's actually coming from in inside or something dropping on top. Because if it comes from inside, it'll create like a line, a wet pattern, like straight up, you know. So it's a shadow. Be careful. I don't want you guys to mislead you guys thinking there is already a drip. Okay, let me pull some in. Okay, we'll tell if it's from the outside or from the inside. So we're gonna do a good thorough wrap here. Put in a little safety baby blanket here uh, I think we got pretty tight right we can use this little rubber boot here to come up and maybe even help him hold himself there we go all right so we got him in there locked like, like this right and we know this is gonna drip a little bit on the top which is fine but if it starts showing dripping from within then we know there's another issue okay so here we go we'll we'll we'll, we'll look at the pattern of the drip marks all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna siphon the brakes. I think we're gonna siphon it before we even try to crack that open. The reason why is I think we got, we lost a lot of brakes. It's like we lost a lot of blood. Oh yeah, it made us lose a lot of blood. So we're gonna have to come back with a vengeance. We're gonna come back and fill it up with some more. So let's go and get our brake fluid. We still have quite a few left in there. I think we might be able to finish our project with this one last, one last bottle, but we'll see. There we go, loosen them up pre. Oh, let's go and put a bib on them right away. Oh, here's our brake line. I cleaned them up. I took them out there with this guy here, and I kind of like, you know, I spun it off. I always do that spun trick just to make sure every bit of brake fluid is out of there before I put him back in the bag. Factory, he's ready to go back in the bag. He's got his original Bonjo bolt too as well. I have to let my sister know she almost actually left the door open there. So, Paul, Paul, I bought we had a chow. I bought a chow. Are they with Nate or none? Lucky. <laughs> Lucky with Nate or Twee and I? You but we are but I. But Sky Smile by Chen, you're done, eh? You're a bank here, Sky Sky Smile. You know, it's funny because usually the little one. Huh? No, get out with about halfway. Get out. Yeah. No, Sky with my ear. Lucky ear, Paul. 
Okay, both dogs are here. The guy that be no way. Bite you in that bike and I Then pop my bag to a crawly. I'm not going to grab your bike by the way. Then pop my bike gate. So it might fall for opening the garage door, but, but she opened the gate, so we're kind of excusing each other. Let's see who's at fault. Because <laughs> those dogs, when they run, they'll come back, but it's forever. They make a scene. Even the male lady doesn't want to come and deliver mail because she's so afraid of uh, the small one. He does actually bite. Um, at the black one, he's friendly. Hmm? Okay, don't be now, I made. Alright, so here we go. We'll put this back here in this bag here. We'll put the banjo bolt. I should just put the banjo bolt in here, huh? Let's put it back in here. No need, no need, no need. You can feel a little bit of that brake residue still in your hands. I think I had to wash it off, you know, quite a bit because... I was getting, it was getting underneath my skin. I was feeling that effect. All right, so here we go. These are the new ones as well as some of the old banjo bolts. You can see when it's crushed, what it looks like. I'll show you. There we go. Okay, this is the old school one with the rubber, which we blamed on it originally. All right, so let me see here. I'll show you what I did last time. I thought, what I thought. So what I did was I had it out like this way, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, I would think it's fine, right? Because the only force that this does is compact this guy right here, right? This is the compact part. So as long as he's able to compact right here, this head part, I think it should be on. As long as the body doesn't interfere. I thought the body was actually hitting this guy. wouldn't let it go further in. But now that I twist it this way, I do have to make sure it lets go in because I can't go on this guy like this. So I have to go over it like this so it can go inside more. Because it was over here, went in, it was blocking by the brake assembly itself. So that was what I thought until I looked back at the video and like, oh no, you've actually totally flipped it around, you know, totally. Because before, again, I had it like this. Let's see if I can get a resolution on that. It always wants to show the resolution from the background. Okay, before I had it like this, right? I have it like this. Let's see if I can hold it a little bit more thinner so you can see more of the surface. So before I had it like this, and what we did now, and I had it inward like this, what we did now was we, we now face it this way, and now I have it outward like this more, which is fine actually, it looks okay. Um, it's still underneath the muffler, and but still gives me a lot of space between this and the disc brake, so you can see there. And this is what I really like, this part right here, where it's not even close to the disc brake to be able to rub on it, just in case it does. Um, but I just didn't like the fact that, uh, you know, it didn't seal for whatever reason. But so far, just moving it this way, I would never think that, you know, this side, as long as it, you know, doesn't have any pressure here that's protruding it like this, would make a, you know, the leak part, this one right here, right? But maybe, maybe it is something more to it. Maybe... I think the holes are perfectly centered between the two banjo heads, see? I'm looking at the hole. I don't see it leaning toward one side more than the other. But however, we have it this way now. And we have it sort of outward now. Before we had it like this way. And we had it more inward like this. Because we could go in more until it rests. But the only thing that prevents us from wanting to go too in is because when it drags the brake line, it drags it to the brake disc. And that's what I, we didn't want our holes to rub. And so now I flipped it this way, but with this way for sure, I cannot poke it in like this because it'll hit the brake assembly uh, caliper housing. So I had to actually bring it out like this, which is fine because it drags the brake line away from the brake disc. So that's my logic so far here. Um, let's check out the um, crush washer, see the difference between these guys here. What happens to a crush one and a brand new one and old school one. So the old school one would have issues too um, if the rubber seal didn't actually... You know keep its um sh shape but i was going to show you there you go look at the difference here so you got a good this is original it doesn't look too bad actually you can't tell if it's damaged or anything yet you know it might be an if, it, if it was a little slit right here it would probably be no useless to us because that's the only thing that's really sealing it this metal here is just to hold that rubber uh frame i don't know why i don't think it even crushes okay and then i just drop one though yeah i did Okay, so this, you can tell if it's been crushed already or not. So let's say, for instance, this one here. 
doesn't look like it's been crushed. Nope, not on this side. Now, however, this one you can tell it's been crushed. So you can see a little bit of the, the strain marks, the scrap. See that little cut scratches? Look at that. And then you can definitely see how, see how it crushes and it takes conform? Look at that. You can see a little indent groove. That's either from the, the brake assembly side or from where the bonjo bolts, you know, wedge itself in there. But you can see how the, see, you don't want to reuse these guys. I mean, you know, a couple times maybe you can probably resurface them, sand them down and get them to crush again. But normally, because once they crush again, it'll create an offset and then oil can leak through that little gap. That's why you probably want to just use a fresh one like this one. So you can see the difference now between the crushed one and the non-crushed one. So you didn't create that in groove yet, so it won't have any problem. All right, so let's get started back and, um, you know, let's let's go for this fight again. I mean, we really want this guy to work because he's the reason why we tore up our scooter again in the first place, right? And unfortunately, the forks there, we can't use them. For one thing, it's the size matter, but the other thing is I could have resold it for whoever sold it to me. But unfortunately, I wouldn't even take them because I can't resell in that condition. They were banged up. He pretty much packaged them in like, uh, you know, you've seen it, right? It's like a little thin grocery bag, <laughs> paper thin, you know what I mean? Like this thin, right? It was just clear. And I don't think there was even paper foam in it. And that box there could have held like at least four of them. Uh, so it could have held like two sets of the, the pair of forks. So unfortunately, you feel bad for him because there's no way... Um, he could have protected them by actually when he packaged them He could have taped them tightly together so they won't go apart and bang each other But they were loosely in just that little plastic bag and a little set of four You know, it was like this it was in this cart here, you know, it's enough for actually four of them You know if you look at the NCY one that I showed you earlier how it came in the NCY one had a little spacer uh, Paper on it and also had a little you know that little rubber boot probably wouldn't do much though But if you look at the package, it was thin. It was just enough for the fork to not bounce over and then rub each other, right? So they made it purposely for that. But unfortunately, you know, I feel bad because he wasn't really a reseller or a retailer of scooter parts. And that's why I really don't like to sell Chinese cheap scooter parts because of that reason they don't come in packaged white. And not only that though, even though I probably make a better huge profit margins, I don't care for the headaches and the complaints. So that's why I only deal with nice brand products, mainly from Taiwan stuff for that reason. So I don't have to deal with all this, uh, you know, customer service issue that you acquire. They're more accurate, they're more secure, and it's, you know, you have better quality control. And then you have a happy customer, repeat customer. So here we go. So let's go and get started. Um, I was going to put this away, so let me go and get back into what I was <laughs> saying I was going to do and do it. All right, so let's do this. We could probably keep this in a separate, because this guy here, we can go back to him and reuse him. Uh, just don't know where all will I think maybe I threw it away or what? Oh, here it goes. It's all in here. I was cut somewhere. This is the wrench here I was going to use. This is how I used to extract excess of brake kit fluid or anything. I never really used it to inject more brake fluid, but that might be a possibility we could do. So let me get these little tubes guys out too. Keep the dirt away from our new bond. I mean, this, this bonjo bolt is, you know, it's just good as new still. Didn't have anything wrong with it. We just assumed that it was leaking based on the washer and then we saw the bonja bolt but it was probably the angle of where we bolted our onto our brake caliper assembly so let's go and put this guy back Woo. fit him in okay there we go nice done deal we'll use him well we had two of these bonja bolts we shouldn't, did we, wouldn't we have like a total of extra, oh no, we still kept ours over there. So yeah, you're right, we used two, we should have two left, so that's normal. Alright, so we'll put these guys in here. Uh, for backup, in case we ever need to pull out whatever reason, I don't think we'll ever need to replace the bonjo bolts. Uh, we'll put this guy back in his Hoka uh, bag here, it's the bad one anyway. Did we, oh we didn't even tape them up, let's tape, uh, should we tape them up? Yeah, we should tape them up and write bad on there again let people know how bad he is he's bad to the bone i couldn't actually tape him because it was like sort of like you know brake fluid is kind of oil based so it, it made adhesive doesn't stick to it well so i think now i could do it now my hands dried and everything so it's good uh, it should be okay now just need to get him into secure the rest of his body there all right 
we'll label them just to make sure people know what kind of bad son of a gun, son of a gun. Do we have them in? I think we have our private marker in here, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Kind of a little bit remember where my stuff are. Uh, we still haven't done anything to the blue wire here. We'll work on that. I'm almost thinking, um, why don't we actually tap the blue wire into that light blue wire that we see here? You remember that one? And let's see what happens. I mean, maybe it'll trigger the a remote start to work, you know? Um, so that's an idea right now. After that, we're probably going to do. So let me write bad. Bad. For sure is bad because this one we know for sure is leaking from the cable uh, connector ends, not the bonjo bolts uh, from screwing. So that's it. Cool. So let's get him back in his little... Uh, his, his brother's cover here. And let's get started again on what we're fine finished doing. I just want to get this done and over with so I can move on to that remote start really. And then I guess the front fork again, if we can't find the right size one that's more in light. Because uh, that one's actually supposed to be 18 and a half, the one he sent me. So his measurement there was 18 and a quarter. It wasn't 18 and a half. So it wasn't even incorrect in the description. Ours is more like 20 inches in height from full length. So that's one thing we have to also look for. So we can't find that. I'm glad we didn't remove this yet. So that guy might be there. Who knows? We might take the reflector on this one and maybe move it over there. But I don't really want to disconnect the wires, you know what I mean? So we might just leave it alone. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Let's go and get one challenge at a time. Let's go and get back started here. I got my Allen socket here. And I'm going to get a little clean shop rag. And let's start, shall we? All right. All right. Just a little slit, that's all. You know, and then you can make it stretch once you put it on here. I realize that now. You don't have to use no fancy scissor or anything like that. It will stretch this paper, right? It's not like you can't rip it more. All right, there we go. All right. And I think most of it comes out basically from us shaking it back and forth, really. And we just need to use the plastic, the hard plastic, not the um, the rubber boot. Because I realize now the hard plastic has that little hole for the purpose of ventilation. So you can siphon your brake fluid. I think they made that purposely by design like that. I just thought, why would they put a hole there through it? Okay, so you can see here, we still got plenty of brakes to be able to tap. Let's bring it to our cardboard here. Leave him in there. We just need his... I lost one of the screws here, so I got another one. So I bet you if anything, once we get this done, we'll find that other screw. It's somewhere somehow. Oh, come on. Don't tell me he's still... I don't think they can actually stick. There we go. Yeah. Don't want to get that... Don't want to get brake fluid on the paint. I mean, I, I think these are like maybe CNC painted. By the way, this is the last one. I actually got the last set. Uh, NCY probably won't be coming out with this design, nor will they make this color anymore, if anything. So I cannot get them anymore. I'm lucky I got the last two pairs. So if you guys like them, I apologize. Uh, you won't be able to get them anymore. I think I sent my last two to my customer. And uh, I was wondering why they only order one of each. I think because they have a ruckus. And most scooters like ours, the Zenon scooters, they take like two of them, right? So... All right, we'll keep an eye on that guy. Actually, you know what? We'll siphon right now because we need to, right? So let me go and put this guy down for a second. And let's just siphon away, right? Please, please do not leak from that hose line. Okay, here we go. All right, you guys will see it before last one. Well, it's still dry, right? There's no sign of whatsoever. So here we go. We're just going to pump. We're just going to pump and look at it. I know this is the most boringest part. Of it. Oh, look how much air came in. You see all that air? Now, I do see, feel like a friction here. Like, tch, 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 tch. there we go. Let's see if I can get a good shot here. That way you guys can really see it. Okay. Let's see what I'm doing also. Look at that air. That way you guys can see my hand, the bar, I can see you. No, <laughs> I always say that. Let me tuck this guy in. We does not need to come all the way and cover everything that we, we're trying to do. I think this is like right here is fine. 
maybe give give him a little a wall or something to make sure he doesn't go overboard, right? There you go. <laughs> I almost heard it. I, maybe that's my stomach because I haven't had breakfast <laughs> or lunch yet. <gasps> but yeah, there's a lot of air on him. That's fine. I guess we, he lost a lot of blood, remember, in the process of us doing this. But yeah, there's air. I think what's making it sticky right now, I believe, might be the brake fluid doing it. It's like maybe drying something that shouldn't be dry, like lubricate. I don't know. We'll find out. I mean, brake fluid is not a lubricate, by the way. Brake fluid is what you mean. It's oil-based a little bit, but it's still, it's brake fluid. It'll eat up things. That's not supposed to eat up. I got this all the way to the phi ratio. I think it's better this way because I can pump more out. You can see actually it's going down. You can look at it now. Without even opening the brake, I believe. See, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure the fluid gets flushed all the way to the hose, right? So look at that. See that? I'm going to pump. I'm going to, as I'm pumping. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Maybe I'm allergic to brake fluid. All right, here we go. No, I'm not. Just kidding. You can see it. See, it's going low on its own. And we haven't even broken the uh, bleeder bolt yet. Which is a good thing because we want to exchange all that air inside the hose or whatever has been, you know, left behind. And I'm feeling this actually getting stiff. Holy shit. And maybe we got something right already. Oh, shit. There's guys. Use that little spur jump. Not because he's getting probably low. He's probably doing that to us. So I'm going to go a little bit more slower. Come on. Don't do that. That's not nice. Look at that. One splat already. Look at that. We didn't even have it. All right. Should we just put the cap on and pump a little faster? Get over with? Let's do it. A little, what do you call that? Uh, geyser protection. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Look at that, it hits perfectly in that whole slot, it starts building up. Look at that, see, brake fluids kind of come out. No, it's not strong enough where it's gonna actually force itself from the plastic. I'm pumping pretty fast now. The faster I can do it, the faster it can be done with. Oh, now I'm shaking it. All right, let's check it out where it's at. Don't wanna overdo it now. Hmm. It's actually halfway in the circle now. I'm not sure because most of the fluid is on top of this roof or not, but I think it's halfway, right? You guys see it too? Okay, let's go ahead. We can go a little more before we tap it some more. I, when it goes past the circle, that's when I t securely tap it. I don't really want to go further. This should be, look at that. It feels like... Remember, it was more loose than this. No, see? Only because I'm scraping. It's still kind of loose, though. See, look. All right, let's see where you at, buddy. Ooh, look how, look how dirty it looks all of a sudden now. Look. I think we're siphoning some old stuff here. Look at that. Didn't we see it more like a yellow color at one point? Or it's just my imagination, but all of a sudden now it's, it's, which is a good thing. That means it's actually getting into probably the, the calipers, the pistons. So it's siphoning the old piston fluid back up as well. It's bringing out the dirt. In a way, it's good for us, really. So that means it's actually going all the way to the bottom or to the areas there. So that's a really good thing. All right, so we'll keep doing it. Look at that. Look at the geyser. Has a straight shot, doesn't he? Now, you can't close the geyser up. The reason why is you need all the air coming back out, too. It needs to, it needs to relieve the vacuum. So that's why we didn't put the, the seal. We're not trying to seal it. We're just trying to siphon the air. Oh. It's not a big deal. It'll come out. Yeah, it's getting low. It's getting low and it's getting mercury. Mercury dark here. Look at that. Doesn't well maybe I'm in the wrong light. 
No, it's still the same. It looks like more grayish to you, don't you think? Before we had it like a yellow, didn't we? Just like a split second ago. Or a minute ago. Huh. Alright, so... Let's let's just kind of push it and see where it, what it does. Really? Right? One, two, three. It's popping. Oh, look at that. Whew! Quick geyser. Alright. Trying to get in there as much as I can before we open the brake bleeder. Before we open the brake bleeder, we're gonna go and tap it some more so we can get started. It feels nice. I mean, it feels a little bit more tighter now, you know, but it's still not enough. All right, let's go and check this out. Let's tap it and then we'll open the brake bleeder. Okay, so it's at the same level. It's not going any further down, but it's changing it to its mercury ugly color. Um, I would I would like to maybe squeeze it out and actually dump it out, but it's okay. We're just trying to cycle all the fluid right now, so I think it'll be okay. But it's dark, though. It wasn't this color, which you'll see. I'll tap it. Hold it nicely. See that? Look how clear that one is. See that? It's lighting up. Kind of mixes with the, the old and with the new. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now after I close this cap here. We're going to do about hold me 10 reps of 10 preps or 10 pushes and then so forth. So let me go ahead and just kind of... Alright, so let's swing them around. Hopefully... He doesn't spill with the swing. Let's see. Might be too low. Might be. Too, we don't have to go all the way low because I think my arm can reach regardless. Let's make sure where he's at. Oh, look at that. He's always borderline on the very, very tip of the top. Okay. So, let me just pump him just for one sake, just to see where he's at. Okay, here it goes. Let you know if he's acting funny. Doesn't seem too bad. He's still pumping, but he's not going any lower. I think we have to start opening it now. All right, so we'll do 10 reps. And let's find out if our even our cloth is wet, even without us even opening the banjo bolt. Then we'll know for sure it's not the banjo, I mean, not the banjo bleeder bolt, I'm sorry. It's not the bleeder bolt that's causing it to drip, creating a wetness here. So let's find out. Let's unravel the monster. All right, here we go. See that? And pull him from this side. Don't see nothing. Don't see nothing. Don't want to see nothing. <laughs> All right. So he's still dry. Okay. So it's a good sign. So let's go and feed him back. And as we're testing this one out, we're going to check for any kind of uh, leaks. All right. There we go. Let's do a candy cane wrap again. It's a pretty good wrap here. Sorry. We don't have to worry about too much like this. Just try getting there as much as possible. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and bleed this guy. I'm gonna reach over for my arms like right there, grab it, a twist like this. And what happens is when I close it like this, when I close the lever, like break it, that's when I pop this guy open. I, and then when I close him back, I'll let go of my palm and I'll siphon again. That's how I do it. So just wanna make sure you guys are aware of my hand movement again. So what I do is I reach over here so you guys have plenty of space. Reach over here like this. I'll pump them like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's see here. Let me get this in position. Okay. Now I'm gonna look at the peak hole here. Let's see if there's any fluid even coming out. I also drive this guy up. Okay. Nothing yet. Close it back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Oh, look at that. Look at that beauty. It's coming out. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Now it's going back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See that bubble right there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, look at that big one. We got big one. Sorry, I got excited there. You guys can see it? Okay, now I see it. Now the ratch is coming to me. Is I push, am I locked down on him yet? Okay, yeah, I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, where did he go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. This is what you want to look at all the particles. Do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come out. Come all out, buddy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and look at your... Oh, come on. This is showing a sign of wetness, but it might be just from the drip marks. Okay, let's find out, okay? This is the moment of truth. We know that this bonjo bolt is going to have a hole there. By the way, you might want to take out the rubber one. You can actually put it on afterwards. I should have done that instead of squishing the rubber guy here. Feel sorry for him. He doesn't need to be in here. I mean, the little rubber cap here. You could have took him out, and then after you're done with the whole setup. Oh, shit. You hear this? You hear a little... <laughs> it's like laughing at us. Oh, man. That was weird. <laughs> you heard that, right? I didn't even do nothing. All right. Let's check this one out. This is the main thing here. All right. Ready? Slightly, a little slightly. Don't know. I really don't know now. I mean, he's like right there, see? A little bit there. Oh, man. All right, so what we'll do is, let me see if I can even move this guy more forward and then crush him a little bit more. That's the only thing I can do because maybe he's still being blocked by this guy right here. See this little half circle coming in only? So I'm going to have to back out just slightly and see. But I'm thinking also at the very top too. Let's look at our cap, see how much it went out. Okay, it's probably very low. Probably we shouldn't wait that low. Oh no, it's still there, see there? We're halfway, we'll tap them though. Let's tap it. All right, so we got a little bit more to maybe tighten more. Get the banjo bolt really off away from that 